Buonasera, we are um, a day 10 of our wine quarantine. If you watch yesterday's video, the wine we talked about as we went back to, you know, Roman history, it would have been this wine. It's Falerno del Massico, known as Falernum way back then during Roman time. This is a wine that uh, Julius Caesar drank throughout his history. And if you feel like a history buff, this is a wonderful wine and glass, definitely worth enjoying. 80% Ayanico, 20% Piedi Rosso, which is the other grape locally grown in this area in Campania. So tonight I wanted to tell you a story of a different grape. It's a grape that is very popular in Italy. I'll tell you where the grape is. It's called Montepulciano. So um, history tells us as far as first documentation, 1792, um, that was the first written documentation by Michele Torcia. He writes about Montepulciano, which is a grape that he had discovered and wines that he had tasted in a specific area called Sulmona, located inland. Uh, uh, towards the mountains, mountainous part of Abruzzo. Uh, although there's always been confusion between Montepulciano the grape and Montepulciano the township in Tuscany, supposedly it all goes back to the medieval time when the Medici family, basically they needed land for the pastures because they were merchants of wool, so they bought some land from the Chacci Piccolomini family uh, in Abruzzo, that's where they settled, and uh, specifically one of the you know, um, the, 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 the Medici people, um, Francesco de' Medici, he was a big wine fan. He really studied wine, enjoyed drinking wine. And supposedly he came from Montepulciano, Tuscany and brought with him these grapes that eventually were planted in Abruzzo. So we don't necessarily know what that grape originally was. But again, after that, Montepulciano or such a grape that was planted in Abruzzo, you know, adapted to the local environment and eventually maybe crossed with other grapes. Things changed a little bit, but that's how supposedly the origin of Montepulciano in Abruzzo is. And that's why there is a tie there, because as you know, throughout history, people were named after the, the place where they came from. You think about Leonardo da Vinci, the famous Tuscan poet. He was Leonardo from Vinci, which is a location in Tuscany. So there is a connection there between the two things, right? Supposedly, the first documentation about quality wines of based on Montepulciano grapes were in the Valle Peligna. The Valle Peligna, from the Greek, Pelagus means muddy which tells us about the fact that here there's a lot of clay in a specific area, but also we are in the middle of the mountains because this is an ancient, you know, um, uh, lake base where this valley is located. Now, when we look at Montepulciano as a grape, it's a quite unique grape because uh, it suffers from asynchronous maturation. What does that tell us? tells us the grapes have to be picked at different times because some berries, you know, ripen at different times than others. So that's definitely one challenge right there. Secondly, it's a late ripener and it needs a long late ripening season because otherwise the pips of the seeds contained in the berries will not fully ripen, may give you some green, harsh tannins, which is quite unpleasant. It is very rich in anthocyanins, as you'll see from this glass. So it's very, very dark in coloration. Uh, most of the plantings of Montepulciano da Bruzzo, although that's decreasing, are tendone. Tendone is basically this big tent overheard type of pergola for massive production of wines. And lastly, Montepulciano is quite a versatile grape because it can give you a variety of styles, meaning it can produce from a beautiful rosato style called Cerasuolo da Bruzzo to the dry reds, sweet reds, as well as sparkling wine that still has a very nice, fresh, vibrant acidity. Tonight, wine is this wine by the Cerulli Spinozzi family called Torre Migliori. So where we are, we are in a unique area of Abruzzo called uh, Teramo or specifically Colline Teramane. So this is an area that is it, different from the rest because uh, the soils are predominantly based on clay. So there's a lot of richness, density in the soils. And also we are smacked in between the Gran Sasso, which is the southernmost uh, glacier in, in Europe. And it's located at about, a, you know, the elevation they reach about 3,000 meters, about 10,000 feet. And on the opposite side, the Adriatic coast. So you get a, the yin-yang element where you get the cold air coming from the glacier, the warm air coming through the valleys from the Adriatic Sea, and really gives Montepulciano some beautiful complexity and concentration. The color here, very, very dark, almost like purple, but still with a vibrant red, red you know, ruby, ruby tones to it. You smell the wine, immediately there is a beautiful geminess, great concentration, almost like macerated plums in alcohol, but then there's a beautiful black cherry. A slightly unripe black currant is definitely persistent, but then also the notes of earth. You get a little bit of tar. A 
And on the palate, beautiful tannic structure. The wine is dry, it's persistent on the palate, you know, carries on this um, fantastic juiciness, but still with this uh, very rich, almost like chalky, you know, meaty tannins on the palate. So this is definitely a food wine. And Abruzzo, again, it's a fantastic region where you can find some great, great food, specifically in this area. You can find tacchino or turkey alla canzanese, which is a specific recipe. Or at the same time, you can have some beautiful pasta, especially when you think about spaghetti alla guitarra, the guitar strings type of spaghetti, which is a common dish from this area. It's all for tonight. I wish you a good evening. Be well, be healthy, and in alto cuore. Ciao!